So I hope you guys are ready to continue working on our stuff with polygons. Today we are going to be switching over a little bit from, um, from just working with angles to working with finding the area of regular polygons. We're going to build up to where we're going to use what we've been working on with interior and exterior angles. Um, but for today, we're going to be using a little bit more about what we know about side lengths and then um, some algebra. So let's get started. Have your notebook out with you in case you don't already. All right now, a square. Hopefully, you know that to find the area of a square, right, we need to do the length times the width. But what if we don't actually know what that is? All we're given here is that the length from one of our vertices to the center is six. Now, we can double that, and then we know the diagonal is 12, but is the diagonal of a square equal to the length and the height? Hopefully, you are also saying no. All right, so that's not our regular method of multiplying base times height. It's not going to work here. We're going to have to be a little more creative. So let's go with purple. We can think about kind of similar to, um, you know, if you need to, where was I going with that? Okay, rewind. We're back in a position where we have to use what we know to get what we want. We know how to find the area of triangles. We also see that we can divide this square into two equivalent triangles. Now, we know that our length of this triangle is 12, right? The diagonal is 12 units long. And the height, the distance from each vertice to the center is the same, so it's six. And then because it's a triangle, we're going to have to multiply by 1 half or divide by 2. We work that math out. That gives us an area of 36 units squared. And because there are two triangles, right, we know that the area of our square, put it up there, is 72 Right, units squared. If you were stuck on any of that, um, I know I went through it really quickly. Um, let me know in a question in comments and I'd be happy to break it down a little more for you. Right, this next one though is gonna go a lot slower. So we wanna find the area of a regular hexagon. Remember, to be a regular polygon, means all of your sides and angles are equivalent. So all of the outsides of our um, triangle here, or oh my gosh, it's not a triangle. What am I thinking? Our hexagon are eight, right? And you'd be able to use, if we needed the angle measures, which we don't right now, but you could use those formulas we were working with. Now, just like we broke up that square into triangles, we can break our hexagon into triangles. You guys have probably broken hexagons into triangles before. Oh boy. All right, well, we're gonna pretend that those are equivalent because they should be. If we're cutting it into six pieces, we're going to get six equilateral triangles. Now we need to find the area of those. We know that the length of our sides is eight. I'm gonna, to make it a little bigger, redraw one of them off to the side here. All right, so we've got eight, eight, and eight. But just like the square, Right, the, our height here is not going to be eight. 
we can't make that assumption. Luckily for us, there's some other things we can do to find out what the height is of our triangle, right? Because in order to find the area of the triangle, we need to know the height. And we need to know the area of the triangle because if we know the area of one of these triangles, we can multiply by six to get all of our triangles. So once we have the height in here, what we've really created are two right triangles, okay? The hypotenuse, remember that fancy word, is eight. This length down here, because we've cut it in half, right, becomes four. So now the only thing that we don't know is our height. Alrighty, so I need you guys to think back to your days in, you would have seen this in algebra, and some of your classes in middle school, maybe even earlier this year in Alex, right, we are going to use the Pythagorean theorem. And that tells us that our two legs squared, so in this case, four squared plus h squared is going to equal 8 squared. We work that math out. If you don't have your perfect squares memorized, that could be something you work on while you are having your, uh, your time at home in our social distancing. I'm going through this pretty quick. Um, this is solving for a variable. It's something I know you guys have done before. Um, that gets us to 48. Now, unfortunately, 48 is not a perfect square. So we're gonna get a wacky number here. But we want to avoid decimals for as long as possible because that starts to make rounding really difficult. And then you get an answer that's can sometimes be way off from the real answer if you round too soon. So we're not gonna do that. But we can rewrite this 48, right? What do we know about the factors of 48? If you were to list them out on your paper, take a moment and do that. One of the ones you should get is 16 times three. So we can rewrite that square root as the square root of 16 times 3. Sixteen is a perfect square. We actually were working with it earlier. It's 4. So, just like canceling in any other type of math equation, we can bring a 4 out here. Now we get 4 root 3. If you did leave your answer as the square root of 48, you wouldn't be wrong, but you're more correct to write it this way. And in math, we always want to be the most correct that we can be. All right, but we're not done yet. We're like halfway. So we have found the area of one of these triangles. Actually, no, we didn't find the area. We found the height. Okay, now we have what we need to find the area. We know that the area of one of our equilateral triangles is going to be one half our base, which was eight, and then that height that we just found to be four root three. Now the root three functions just like a variable. So you can think about it as an x, right? It's, it's just kind of there. And these other numbers are the coefficients that we're multiplying. So when you do 1 half times 8 times 4, that a looks terrible, We get 16 times the square root of 3. Now we are almost there. So each of these six triangles 
has an area of 16 times the square root of 3. So in order to find the area of the whole shape, you guessed it, we have to multiply by 6. All right, so we got 16 root 3 times 6. And that is going to get us 96 root 3. Now, if you really want to round and get an approximation, this would be where you do it. We'll round to the nearest tenth, and you will get 166.3. But again, you could leave it as this, and you would be totally right. So just to recap the process we went through, we divided our regular polygon into shapes that we knew how to find the area of. We also had to find our height, find the area of the triangle, find the area of the number of, of um, shapes all together. Wow, I don't know what is going on with my brain today. Like I know what I wanna say. I've got all my notes here for this lesson. Got everything worked out, and it's just not coming out right. So um, hopefully it's a little entertaining for you, at least. Right. You guys do have some homework to try. So move my head over here. Brie is going to fertilize her flower bed, which is shaped like a regular pentagon. And now one bag of fertilizer will allow her to fertilize 150 square feet. But she doesn't know how much to buy because she doesn't know the area of the flower bed. So using the given information, we're going to have to determine the area and how many bags of fertilizer she's going to need. So you want to you're going to want to approach this the same way we did the square and the hexagon by dividing it into equal triangles. So start with a point in the the center or as close to the center as you can. Divide your shape into equal triangles. And so this is what you're working on for homework um, over the weekend. And let me know if you have any questions or if you want to do like a video chat lesson or something. Um, I would love to hear from you guys so that I can best meet what you need. Alrighty. Bye.